Welcome to our show, Hong Kong Brief, where we dive into the latest and most intriguing news from around the globe with a light-hearted touch. Let's get rolling with today's roundup. First up, the financial world is buzzing with optimism as Asian markets kick off the week on a high note. From Tokyo to Sydney, stock indices are climbing, with investors on the edge of their seats awaiting crucial earnings reports and a key U.S. inflation measure. It's like the financial universe is holding its breath, hoping these reports will keep the good vibes rolling. Japan's Nikkei 225 is leading the charge, showing the bulls are definitely in town. But it's not just about the numbers, it's the anticipation of what's to come that's got everyone talking. Switching gears to the media landscape, we're taking a moment to reflect on the insights of David Armstrong, a journalistic giant with stories spanning over five decades. Armstrong's seen it all, from the highs of quality journalism to the lows of gotcha moments. Yet, he finds a silver lining in Southeast Asia's vibrant media scene, where the tradition of storytelling thrives alongside digital innovation. His journey, marked by encounters with media moguls and historic events, reminds us of the power of journalism in shaping our understanding of the world. It's a call to remember the value of digging deep and telling stories that matter. And now, for a dash of sports excitement, New Zealand's Rugby Sevens teams are making waves, sending a clear message to their rivals ahead of the Paris Olympics. Both the men's and women's teams have clinched titles in Hong Kong, showcasing their dominance and setting their sights on Olympic gold. It's not just about the wins, it's the spirit, determination, and preparation that point to a thrilling Olympic showdown. New Zealand is laying down the gauntlet, and we can't wait to see how this journey to Olympic glory unfolds. From the bustling stock markets of Asia to the reflective corridors of journalism and the competitive fields of rugby, today's stories highlight a world in constant motion, driven by ambition, resilience, and the pursuit of excellence. Please stay tuned for the detailed content on each of these fascinating narratives. Venturing into the realm of media, the diplomat introduced us to David Armstrong, a sage of journalism with more than half a century of stories under his belt. Armstrong, having navigated the tumultuous waters of the media landscape, observed a decline in the quality of journalism, lamenting the industry's drift towards superficiality and the relentless pursuit of gotcha moments. Yet, amidst the gloom, he found solace in the vibrant media scene of Southeast Asia. Here, newspapers thrived, offering robust regional coverage and a harmonious blend of print and online presence. Armstrong's journey through the media world was nothing short of legendary, having worked alongside media titans such as Rupert Murdoch and Carrie Packer, and witnessing pivotal moments like the death of Princess Diana and the 9-11 attacks. His commitment to journalism didn't wane as he ventured into Myanmar during its transition to democracy and took up the mantle as chairman of UCA News, all the while penning insights on Asia media for pearls and irritations. Armstrong's narrative is a testament to the enduring spirit of quality journalism in an age of change. Switching gears to the world of sports, the Japan Times captured the triumphant roar of New Zealand's rugby sevens teams as they sent a thunderous warning to their rivals ahead of the Paris Olympics. The men's team, with a display of sheer dominance, clinched the Hong Kong sevens crown by outplaying France, a victory that resonated far beyond the confines of the stadium. Not to be outdone, the women's team mirrored this success, securing the Hong Kong title with a convincing win over the United States. These victories were not just about the accolades, but a declaration of intent, a clear message that New Zealand was gunning for gold at the upcoming Paris Olympics. The determination and skill displayed by both teams were indicative of their aspirations and the rigorous path of preparation they were willing to tread on for Olympic glory. Each of these stories, from the optimistic trends in the Asian stock markets to the reflective insights of a seasoned journalist and the competitive spirit of New Zealand's rugby teams, paints a vivid picture of a world in motion. Whether it's the financial markets eagerly awaiting crucial reports, the media industry navigating its challenges while celebrating its triumphs, 
or athletes setting their sights on Olympic gold, these narratives remind us of the relentless pursuit of excellence and the ever-present potential for change. In the grand chessboard of global economics and geopolitics, nations are constantly vying for positions of power and influence. Among these contenders, India and China stand out as two giants with the potential to shape the future of global growth. According to Bloomberg Economics, India, under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, is on the cusp of overtaking China to become the world's largest contributor to global economic growth. This ambitious goal hinges on India's ability to improve infrastructure, expand its workforce, build better cities, and attract more factories. The Modi government has already taken significant steps towards these goals, allocating billions of rupees to infrastructure projects and implementing incentive programs to encourage domestic manufacturing. Companies like Apple and Samsung have responded by ramping up production in the country, signaling India's growing attractiveness to foreign investors. Despite these promising developments, India's journey to economic supremacy is not without its hurdles. The country's infrastructure remains in need of improvement, its education system is inconsistent, and there is a glaring lack of skilled workers. Moreover, India's labor force participation is relatively low, indicating a need for policies that make the workforce more employable. To truly surpass China and lead global growth, India will need to continue investing in infrastructure, enhancing education and skills, and drawing in more foreign investment. On a different note, the world of sports often mirrors the dynamics of international relations, with nations competing for prestige and dominance. The Cathay HSBC Hong Kong Sevens tournaments showcased the prowess of New Zealand's rugby teams, both men's and women's, as they clinched victories against their opponents. The Black Ferns' triumph over the USA and the New Zealand men's teams win against Hong Kong underscored their dominance in the sport. These victories not only propelled the Kiwi women ahead of Australia in the HSBC SVNS standings, but also highlighted the competitive spirit and excellence that nations strive for on the global stage. Meanwhile, the geopolitical landscape continues to be shaped by the complex interplay between major powers. China's role in supporting Russia's military campaign in Ukraine has drawn scrutiny from international observers. According to reports from U.S. officials, as covered by The Telegraph, China has been providing Russia with rifle scopes, tank components, rocket fuel, and satellite imagery, among other military aids. This support, which bypasses Western sanctions, has bolstered Russia's efforts in Ukraine, even as the U.S. and EU struggle to supply ammunition to Ukrainian forces. China's quiet backing of Russia's military endeavors reflects the strategic calculations and alliances that define international politics. In conclusion, the global arena is a stage for both cooperation and competition, where economic growth, sporting achievements, and geopolitical strategies intertwine. India's pursuit of economic leadership, New Zealand's rugby triumphs, and China's strategic support for Russia are but a few threads in the intricate tapestry of international relations. Each development carries implications for the balance of power and the future direction of global affairs. As nations navigate these challenges and opportunities, the world watches, waiting to see how the dynamics of power and influence will evolve in the years to come. In a fascinating turn of events, Bloomberg reports a significant downturn in Chinese investments in Australia, marking a shift in economic engagement that could have far-reaching implications. According to a study by KPMG and the University of Sydney, Chinese investment in Australia plummeted by 37% to $892 million in 2023, hitting its second lowest point in nearly two decades. This decline comes amidst a broader pivot by Chinese companies towards projects aligned with President Xi Jinping's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative. The sectors most affected include commercial real estate and mining, areas that have traditionally been magnets for Chinese capital. The report suggests that as China redirects its investment focus towards processing industries, Australia might face new competitive challenges. 
Notably, the analysis excludes portfolio investments and contributions from entities in Hong Kong and Macau, indicating a strategic recalibration of Chinese economic interests on the global stage. Meanwhile, Nikkei Asia introduces us to Francis Cha, a Korean-American author who is weaving the rich tapestry of South Korean culture into the fabric of Western literature. Cha, who has called places like Hong Kong and Seoul home, recently settled in Sleepy Hollow, New York, and is on a mission to broaden the West's understanding of her heritage. Her debut novel, If I Had Your Face, 2020, was hailed by Time magazine, U.S. National Public Radio, and the BBC as one of the year's best books. The narrative delves into the intricacies of the lives of four women in contemporary Seoul, offering readers a glimpse into a world that's both foreign and familiar. Building on the success of her first book, Cha has ventured into children's literature with The Goblin Twins, a tale that introduces young readers to South Korean folklore. The story of two goblin siblings navigating the wonders and challenges of New York City, including their first Halloween, aims to foster cultural understanding and curiosity. Drawing from her desire to present South Korea in a relatable manner to her children's American peers, Cha has crafted a narrative that not only entertains but educates. The positive reception of The Goblin Twins has encouraged Cha to continue blending cultural narratives, balancing her darker adult fiction with stories that spark joy and laughter among her younger audience. Cha's journey from journalism, including a stint at CNN, to fiction writing and teaching, underscores her commitment to storytelling as a means of cultural exchange. With plans for a sequel to The Goblin Twins and another adult fiction set in South Korea, Cha is determined to keep bridging cultural divides. Her work, rooted in a deep respect for her heritage, reflects a conscientious effort to accurately represent South Korean culture to the world. Through her novels, Cha not only entertains but invites readers on a journey of discovery, challenging them to see beyond their own perspectives and embrace the diversity that shapes our global community. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobriefcom Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.